Hi guys, Brian here from the gas station again. Uh, kind of a, a quick review for you. Um, <clears throat> I've I've actually had this camera for a while. I haven't really uh, uh, brought it out for review. I've, I've kind of wanted to play with it for a bit, but um, uh, I definitely did want to go over it. Uh, here it is. It's the uh, the Contax G2, um, and I know. Uh, previously I did a review of the Contax G1 here um, and I really do love this camera I think it's a great camera um, and uh, definitely definitely a, 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 an unbelievable bargain when it comes to uh, getting into a range file rangefinder style camera um, at, a, at a good good price the Contax G2 um, is equally if not better definitely better camera than the G1 is it worth five times the price I'm not sure you can pick up a Contax G1 for you know between 100 and 150 dollars uh, you're gonna be looking around and spending I don't know I'd say about four <coughs> four to six hundred dollars somewhere around there for a G2 the G2 really is a lovely camera it does have a lot of features um, I don't know. It's just it's more robust than the G1. Uh, what you really gain uh, out of it, you get a faster uh, high shutter speed of uh, one four thousandths of a second, which is a big deal if you're shooting uh, faster glass like the uh, 45 millimeter uh, f2 uh, from from Zeiss. It's the Carl Zeiss 45 millimeter f2. <clears throat> so if you're shooting outdoors and you want to use that wider aperture, that one four thousandths of a second is going to be helpful. Um, you get bracketing, you get a, a faster uh, continuous high mode um, so you're going to be shooting a lot more frames per second uh, the way that goes the, fo the manual focus control on the on the which this is right here it's a little knob here on the front is uh, definitely easier to use um, you have this uh, it's also a, a button focus on the back of the camera so you can focus using uh, your thumb and then you would then take your shot here. Um, that's really nice. It has continuous autofocus, manual focus, adjustable diopter. Um, I'll just do a quick run through on the camera here. Exposure compensation uh, dial right here. Uh, the, you can set your shutter speeds here. Exposure lock, uh, auto exposure lock is here and you would flip that there to lock in your exposure. Film counter, manual focus uh, knob right there. ISO settings here on the left hand side you have drive options uh, which are single, continuous low, continuous high, self timer and then uh, for double exposures um, or yeah pretty much it's double exposures you can't really do much more than that with it um, the camera ergonomically is a great camera it's definitely a more comfortable camera for me uh, than the G1 the G1 is a little bit small in the hand for me um, it, it doesn't quite fit my hand as well I have to kind of squish up my fingers this is definitely larger and fits my hand uh, better um, I'll show you here the difference between the two here okay well I, I don't have a great camera view here but the uh, the G2 is definitely thicker and it is a tad bit wider going this way um, and I think height wise it's about the same size um, Focusing is definitely quieter. How much faster it is, I don't know. Uh, it's definitely a quieter focus. I have film in my G1, so I'm not going to take any pictures here, but I, I can definitely show you. It definitely has a kind of more of a grind to it, um, but it's definitely a great camera. I love, I love the G1, and I really, really, really like the G2. Is it that much worth that much more money than the G1? And that's that's the question I have today. I'm not really sure. Um, there are other features and benefits. Five times much that much? I, I don't know. That, I mean, that's that's a big question. I happen to get my G2 very cheap. It's in kind of rough shape. I don't know if you can see all the scratches on it and stuff like that. It's definitely a bargain uh, camera if you were to rate it by uh, you know any kind of rating system. And I got I got it super cheap so yeah, I'm, I'm not complaining so um, but uh, you know I don't know five times as much I'm, again I'm not sure the nice thing about the G1 is it does take all the the, the G glass except for the 35 millimeter uh, lens unless you have a green label one um, and uh, I don't think you even have the option for the zoom 
uh, they, they contacts me to Zoom. I'm, uh, somebody correct me if I'm wrong on that. Um, but yeah, so you have to have a, a contacts G1 with a green label and blah blah blah. But anyway, we're not talking about the G2. We're talking about the, we're not talking about the G1. We're talking about the G2. The G2 is a lovely camera. I mean, you know, good fit and finish, all that. Um, you know, continuous shooting. If that really is a thing, and you have lots of money to to blow on uh, on film. Uh, you know, it, it can go pretty quick. Let's see if we can get air. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty quick. Continuous low is nice. And, yeah, I mean, it's good. And it works with the contacts, flashes, all that stuff. It does have exposure bracketing here. This little knob here, when you uh, switch that to exposure bracketing, it'll take uh, three shots, you know, and you can do it at a half a stop or at one stop. Um, but it'll take those three uh, exposure bracketing shots. Uh, you know, definitely a better camera, more camera. Um, but I, again, like I said, I'm not I'm not convinced of the uh, the price that that they're going for. If that's the better deal, um, you know, honestly, here's here's the scoop. If you're if you're buying a camera and you uh, can afford, you know, the G1. This is the G1. If you can afford the G1 on a lens, you're looking at probably about 550 bucks. Okay, and that'll that'll net you a lot, and you still get one two thousandths of a second, uh, high shutter speed. You get you get pretty much most of everything that's there. I would say the G1 is probably eighty to ninety percent of what the G2 is. Um, it's not all there, but it's 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 pretty good. I mean, there's a lot there. Overall, though, I mean, if, you know, again, if you're looking to get into the rangefinder game, sort of, and these aren't technically rangefinders, but if you're, if you like that style of camera, if you like that style of shooting, these are going to give you the automated stuff that you want: autofocus, auto wind, auto rewind, you know, all that stuff that you don't get in something like a Leica. Um, even, even here. If we take a look at my Leica, here, this is my M6. I have a, a dual range Sumacron on here and the dual range Sumacron is kind of like one of the cheaper ways you can get into like a glass and even still that lens there you're going to be looking between uh, $600 for a meh copy to eight nine hundred dollars uh somewhere in there for for a decent copy of it uh i've added the uh the motor drive which is a very expensive option uh for this camera i happen to really like it um i i mean i don't use it all the time i use it sometimes sometimes i just want to like rattle stuff off and 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 do that but um you know, but you're, you're looking at about a grand, you know, give or take a couple hundred bucks for a body. Then you're looking, you know, eight, nine, you know, about eight hundred. We'll call it eight, nine hundred dollars for a lens. Then if you want the motor drive, you're looking, you know, at the grip. I mean, if you, you know, specs on paper, the, the contacts cameras blow this away, uh, no doubt. However, there is a lot of that, and I'm sure I'm going to get flamed for this, that sort of, that like a certain something that, that, and there it is there. I, I can't quantify all of it. I can't, you know, definitely tell you exactly what it is. Uh, the the feel of this camera, the way it shoots, it's it really is special. And you know, I, you know, I'm not a rich guy. Believe me, I, I get my I try and get my stuff as cheap as possible. But uh, I do enjoy the Leica. I don't have a slew of Leicas. I have you know an older m6 which you know it's not an mp and those are even big bucks i don't have an m7 can't afford that um but uh you know i do love i do love the, the leica stuff and you know and that's that um what i also just recently sort of i guess reacquired is a my konica hexar af and you're looking probably for for a hexar you're going to be somewhere in the neighborhood they're selling anywhere from 350 to about 650 somewhere around there I personally think overall if you don't need to change lenses and that's key if you if you're kinda like you're happy with one lens and that's gonna be good enough for you I think the Hexar might be the best bargain out there the quality of the lens on this camera is phenomenal the that 35 millimeter f2 is amazing i just love the colors the rendition the, the way it looks the just everything about that camera the way this camera handles and performs i love it i mean i really really do uh it's it's really fast focusing it's got infrared focusing it's 
and it's quiet. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but again, in you know this camera with the silent mode, you put that on the silent mode, and it's almost completely inaudible. You just can't hear it. Um, it's really nice. It's comfortable. The style-wise, looks-wise, it's a kind of eh, I'm not so crazy about it, but it's very comfortable in the hand. The grip is nice. The controls for like the aperture and stuff. If you shoot this aperture priority or in program mode. You know, I think you'll be really pleased with it. Uh, if you're going full manual, this is not probably the right camera if you want to shoot manually. You can preset this camera and set it up for like a sort of a street scenario and, and that kind of thing. That's fine. Uh, if you want to go full manually, you kind of go Leica. Or if you want to go manual and everything else, you can go with one of the contacts. But even if you look at, again, if we go to the contacts G1, you're looking at you know again 100 150 for the body and then four you know 350 for 400 you know for a lens so you know you're looking around the same price as you would be for the hexar again if you need to change lenses get a contacts get a leica go that go that route if you're looking for any high end stuff by the way if <laughs> you don't even really need any of this stuff which is kind of the silly part in the end um, i just did a review on the contacts not the contacts, the uh, Canon QL17 uh, G3. Great camera, go get one of those. Um, these, these are not necessary to have, but boy, they are fun and they really make it interesting and they kind of inspire you to do other stuff. But um, I, I love these cameras. This, this Hexar, I, I think it's just phenomenal. I think it's just a great camera. It's, um, you know, the, the one limitation or the one bugaboo about this camera is it does have a high shutter speed of, are you ready, one two fiftieth of a second. That's, <laughs> that's really not very fast. That is usually circumvented and that problem is, is taken care of with an MD, ND filter or using a higher aperture speed. You just crank that, that up. And the camera, uh, honestly, and if you're, you know, if you're using slower film outside, you're going to be fine. If you're using, you know, if you're inside, you know, you can use you know the the slower stuff and it's got that f2 lens that beautiful beautiful lens so anyway this wasn't really meant to be a versus this was sort of meant to be a like here are some options and this is this is what, what you can do um, none of these again like i said are necessary there's a lot of cameras out there i just showed you the the olympus xa those are rangefinders they're great cameras they do all the same stuff that these do does not is that going to be conducive to what you want to do in your work it was, was your is that going to help you how you work um, you know that's up to you these, these are choices you have to make how much do you want to invest into this I mean again gear isn't the one thing that's gonna make you a great photographer uh, it will give you different looks that's an absolute fact you know uh, each camera kinda has its own look and feel and may influence how you shoot uh, but are they are they absolutely necessary well a camera is necessary you know just as a paintbrush is necessary to do to do painting but um, that tool is really w the one that inspires you and, and gets you going and kinda floats your boat as it were so you know I mean again they're all they're all great cameras uh, Leica is fantastic I love the Leica I love the Hexar I love the contacts there, but they're all different. I, I bring them out for different things for how I feel that day. I mean, it's it's all again. What what is it for you? And I also collect cameras too, so I, I like having the cameras. I mean, it's you know it's my weird obsession. I'm not into drinking or anything else. I don't go out. I just, you know I go out and I take pictures. That's my thing. Where I collect cameras and I make these videos. I have a very boring lifestyle, I guess, but is what makes me happy. You know, I spend time with my kids and uh, do stuff like that. But what makes you happy? Pick one of these. They're all good. Pick a Canon. Pick a Nikon. Go SLR. You know, there's nothing wrong with shooting an SLR. I, I just bought a, a the Nikon F3, what a cool camera that is. I've got a review coming up on that. So anyway, I've been rambling too long on this. Anyway, you guys are awesome. Uh, I just want to say uh, also thank you to all you guys. I just passed, and it's not a huge benchmark, but for me it's kind of cool. Um, just passed 200,000 views total uh, lifetime uh, on this channel. Uh, and I'm really excited about that. It's kind of fun. Just and Basically just some, some guy sitting in his, in his place, you know, 
doing camera review so anyway I really appreciate everything you guys do so uh, more feedback as always I try and I get lots of requests for camera reviews if I can get the camera I will review it uh, if I can find it uh, and I do keep my eye out so uh, anyway that's about it guys uh, contacts G2 definitely a goodbye you know if you, if you don't want to go Leica this is a bargain you know so you're looking at you know five you know four or five plus you know four so nine it's cheaper than a Leica definitely better bargain as far as I'm concerned more technically sophisticated camera but anyway you're gonna have to make those decisions on your own I would say no matter what just get out there and shoot find yourself something that strikes your fancy you're not gonna go wrong with any of these so all great cameras okay that's about it I've rambled on long enough Brian the gas station thank you very much take care guys please like subscribe all that stuff take care bye bye